Yeah. Uh, December was absolutely crazy. If anybody else feels that way, please raise your hand. And I think that probably a lot of you guys feel that way because for us, for crafters, for DIYers, for sewists, or however else you would like to call yourself, December is busy with making our own gifts. We're selling outfits for Christmas parties, New Year events. We're dressing the whole family in handmade pajamas. So it's definitely, definitely busy. And I also work full time. So December for me is one of the busiest months at work. So this month for me is like, do it all, do it hard, and don't remember your name by the end of the day when you come home. But I still managed to fit in some sewing. So in this video, I would love to share with you five sewing makes for the month of December for myself and my family. So let's get started. Hello, my dear sewing friends, it's Elisa here with Thoughtful Creativity, and I am here for you every Friday and Saturday with a new video on sewing and free sewing patterns. So if you like what you see, definitely click subscribe. Now, today we're talking about sewing makes for the month of December, and the first make I that I would love to share with you was about to be a sewing fail. So and if there's one wish that I wish for you in this coming year is don't give up on your sewing fails. You never know what's waiting for you on the other side. And this was exactly that case. And I think it came out to be one of my favorite garments of the year, if not the favorite. So let me show you what I'm talking about. my Sherpa coat of the season. Super proud of it, definitely so happy that I did not give up on it. Now, where did the sewing fail start? And I think that it all starts in our lack of vision or maybe lack of understanding of your vision. So the things that I did not take into, into the account. Number one, the sewing pattern that I used. The sewing pattern itself is great, but the volume of the fabric did not go well with the raglan sleeves, which uh, I enjoy wearing raglan sleeves from time to time, but I really didn't think of how these raglan sleeves, these oversized raglan sleeves are going to look like in this big, white, fluffy Sherpa fabric. And when I came to realize that, oh wow, like I've just cut this all out and it's been about two yards of fabric and it's not working out, I was devastated. It's not in my fashion to um, to waste fabric. It's definitely not in my fashion to like um, not think it through and just give up on, on the project. And I was super close to giving up. My surgery wasn't taking it. It was too fluffy. It was a nightmare to work with. All of these you know, things combined just definitely made it even worse. So I had to put it aside for a few days and I literally had to sleep on it and I had to rethink it. And then the idea came to me that, wait a second, I have this slouchy cardigan pattern that I really enjoy. It would be perfect if made in this really nice fluffy fabric. Besides, when you sew garments for winter, you usually make your outerwear a little bit bigger just because underneath you have like layers and layers of clothing because it's cold outside. And I thought, you know what? Making a coat out of this cardigan pattern would be awesome. So I thought, you know what? I've already wasted this fabric, so I couldn't do any worse, right? I had to do a few, a few interesting things and a few decisions that I was like, I wasn't really sure about. Now the sleeve, for example, over here, uh, is con it consists out of two pieces when the actual pattern go calls for one, but I did um, align it perfectly with the shoulder seam, so it just looks like a continuous piece, which I was really happy about. Now the middle band uh, of the actual pattern, the original idea was to still do the band down the middle, but again, I for some reason didn't take into account that the fabric is so fluffy that my serger just wouldn't even feed it through. And I did adjust uh, the tension and the speed and everything, but literally when I would put four layers of this fabric uh, underneath the serger, the presser foot just wouldn't even go down just because it was so fluffy and so thick. So I really had to rethink that moment again. And I thought, well, you know, I'm making a winter coat, so I might as well add a zipper down the middle because who wants to walk around with you know <laughs> all sides of your coat just flopping now I didn't have the right um, length of the of the 
a zipper, but I really did like this metallic and beige zipper because it went with the other colors of the coat uh, wonderfully. So I thought, you know what? I'm just going to use the full length of the zipper. I'm just going to insert it and I'm going to insert it up to the neckline and I'm just going to zip it up as, as far as I need it to be. And I think it adds actually a very interesting design element to the coat itself. And I did test it to make sure that when I zip it up only halfway, it doesn't undo itself like some of the other zippers do. And of course in the back I did decide to insert like a little neck band over here just because without it it was kind of like a little bit bare so I wanted um, you know something to just to cover this little side over here and sleeve bands over here I made out of the same fabric just to kind of complement and to tie it all together. I did line it just because Sherpa itself is a little fluffy and fuzzy so I did not want to wear something darker underneath maybe like a dark brown color take it off and be all like fuzzy fluffy so I did line it and again I didn't have one continuous piece of this white cotton with um, gold polka dots so I thought you know what I have this complementing color not color complementing fabric and pink with gold and uh, little dots over here so you know I was just really determined to make it work don't give up you never know where your sewing fail might take you and there might be your biggest sewing success on the other side of it Hey guys, do you remember this beige Monroe turtleneck that I did adjust and made back in October, maybe November? Well, it really is such an essential, wonderful piece for your winter, fall wardrobe that I actually made another one. Same adjustments, I adjusted the sleeves and I adjusted the width of the actual pattern and I made it in this gray jersey and I absolutely love it. These two pieces I've been wearing nonstop, on repeat, all season long, free sound pattern of course, and I absolutely Absolutely love them. So if you're looking for like a very nice universal warm pattern for your uh, colder times wherever you live, this is the one to go for. <laughs> you know what else I made out of that pink cotton with gold dots? I made a scarf and a hat for my little baby girl when we went to the zoo. Yes, we went to the zoo in the middle of the winter because that was her birthday and we wanted to do something special. And I think we were like literally the only people at the zoo, which was really interesting and really fun. And we still got to see some animals for sure, but it was just a very bizarre, almost like a haunted house experience because literally there was nobody else. Either way, the free song pattern for it is from a Russian website, trusted, tried, so definitely if you would love to make it, go for it. Uh, there is a step-by-step -step sewing tutorial for this exact pattern. I know it is in Russian language, but if you click on the subtitles, the subtitles are actually pretty good, so it will explain you how to sew it up. It is a very easy, very quick make. You can make it for boys, you can make it for girls, multiple sizes, so I definitely recommend it. You know what, now that I'm showing this to you, I don't actually remember if I made the slouchy beanie at the very end of December or at the very, very, very beginning of January. Um, but either way, I'm showing this to you. So it's a free sewing pattern by Patterns for Pirates Slouchy Beanie. I made one for my sister-in-law and her husband and while I was making it, of course I had to try one on, right? So I actually loved the way it did fit. So I made one for myself and funny, funny story. So the original pattern that I I used for uh, my Sherpa coat again, my Sherpa coat was Shauna coat again, and it featured pockets. So I did cut out pockets. Now the pockets didn't work out as you saw from the final piece. So I used pockets to cut out this uh, slouchy beanie and that way I was like oh man I didn't even waste any other fabric didn't really have to cut it out from any other pieces that I had left of this fabric so I was really really happy about it so it's a super nice warm hat you use the same material so it goes really well together with my Sherpa coat house pants who doesn't like to make house pants <laughs> I am one of those people who absolutely loves a new pair of house pants because I don't really have that many. And the ones that I have now have watercolors, Mod Podge, glue, and all sorts of other interesting things on them. And of course I wash them, but those kind of stains don't really come out. So when you see me in those house pants, it looks like I'm an artist that has been locked up for like 10 days straight in its art studio and I've just escaped. So it's a little bit of like a, like a, you know, like a scene out of a horror movie. <laughs> Not that bad, of course. Barb pants is a free sewing pattern that will be perfect for these kind of pants to wear at home or maybe to wear out. I've used it many, many times for both styles and I can tell you it is an absolute winner for sure. 
I almost forgot to guys tell you that this is another sewing mag that I made in December. I don't know why, it almost skipped my mind. So this is a beautiful Calypso top by one of the French designers with this beautiful little bow in the back. And I know that a lot of you guys did enjoy this free sewing pattern when I shared it with you in one of my free sewing pattern videos for fall. And I think I was telling you that how elegant yet simple yet just very beautiful this top is. And of course it was on my to-do list and I collaborated with wonderful Kristen from the Dahlia Society. She is a sewing logger from Australia. Can you guys imagine what internet does for us this, these days that you can be here in the United States and Tennessee out of all places and you can reach and you can talk and you can collaborate with people from across the world. So this was definitely a very interesting video and we did share our uh, adjustments and what did we do to make these tops fit ourselves. She made a wonderful gorgeous option uh, out of very nice bright fabric so definitely worth watching it and I will leave all the links in the info box below so that way you can find them very easily but if you are looking for a very simple elegant yet uh, a top with some sort of character this would be a wonderful free sewing pattern to make for you. Now guys, if you are looking for more free sewing patterns, I've just released a video for you for 10 free sewing patterns to sew this winter. Wonderful styles, wonderful free sewing patterns, some new free sewing patterns from French designers. You see that video right on your screens. Definitely click on it. Definitely check it out. Sew up a storm and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.